Did you know that infections from catheters are one of the most common complications in hospitals? Not only can they make patients sicker, but they also cost the healthcare system billions of dollars every year. For patients on dialysis or with serious conditions, these infections can be life-threatening. And the problem is bigger than most people realize. Hey everyone, Wasim Marusi here. Welcome back to the Biotech Investor, your spot for the latest news, trends, and opportunities in the world of biotech. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're always in the loop. Today, we're diving into a company that's been turning heads in the biotech space, Cormedics, or ticker symbol CRMD. This small cap biotech player is attracting attention with its groundbreaking solutions aiming at tackling critical healthcare challenges. So grab your coffee, settle in, and let's uncover why Cormedics could be poised for significant growth. Let's go. Let's start with the basics. Chromatics is a biopharmaceutical company that was founded with a mission to develop life-saving therapies for some of the most critical health challenges out there. Their primary focus, preventing infections and complications in patients undergoing treatments like hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is a medical treatment used for people with kidney failure when their kidneys can no longer effectively filter waste toxins and excess fluids from the blood. It works by diverting blood from the body into a machine called a dialyzer, which acts as an artificial kidney. The company was founded back in 2006 and is headquartered in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Now let's talk leadership because the company is only as strong as the people steering the ship. Leading the charge is CEO Joe Todisco, who has been instrumental in steering Cormedics through its recent successes. Joe Todesco joined the company in 2022. And let me tell you, this guy has biotech leadership written all over him. Joe brings over 20 years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry. Before joining Cormedics, he served as executive vice president and chief commercial officer at Amnial Pharmaceuticals, where he led a 380 million branded products division. He also co-founded Gemini Labs, a specialty pharmaceutical company that was later acquired by Amnial. Joe's resume includes stints at Ranbaxy Pharmaceuticals and Par Pharmaceuticals, where he honed his expertise in commercial strategy and business development. So why is Joe Todisco the right fit for Cormedics? Well, his track record speaks for itself. He successfully scaled businesses globally, managed complex product launches, and even led merger integrations. With Cormedics now transitioning from development to commercialization, especially with their flagship product, DefenCath, Joe's leadership is exactly what this company needs to navigate this critical phase. Oh, and did I mention he owns over 350,000 shares of Cormedic stock? Plenty of skin in the game. All right, so let's get into what makes Cormedics such an exciting prospect for investors. Their flagship product, DefenCath. This is a catheter lock solution designed to prevent catheter-related bloodstream infections, or CRBSI, in patients undergoing hemodialysis. These infections are not only life-threatening, but also incredibly costly for the healthcare system. DefenCath was FDA approved in late 2023 after demonstrating remarkable results in clinical trials. A 71% reduction in bloodstream infections compared to standard treatments like heparin. It's the first and only antimicrobial catheter lock solution approved in the US, giving Cormedics a significant edge in this market with patents protecting DefenCath until 2042 and a 10-year of market exclusivity already locked in. So let's talk a little deeper into the problem that Cormedics is tackling with DefenCath, catheter-related bloodstream infections. These are serious infections that occur when bacteria or fungi enter the bloodstream through central venous catheters or CVCs. CVCs are essential for patients undergoing treatments like hemodialysis, chemotherapy, or total parenteral nutrition, 
but they can come with significant risks. Globally, CRBSIs are a major healthcare challenge. In the USA alone, there are approximately 250,000 cases annually, leading to extended hospital stays and even death in severe cases. Mortality rates can range from 12 to 25 percent, depending on the severity and undergoing health conditions of the patient. Worldwide, the incidence of CRBSIs with higher rates reported in regions with limited access to advanced preventive measures. For example, in neonatal intensive care units, NICUs, the incidence can reach as high as 11 per 1,000 catheter days in some regions. These infections are not just life-threatening, they are also very costly. Each CRBSI case can add up to $40,000 in healthcare expenses due to prolonged hospital stays and additional treatments. Clearly, there's an urgent need for effective prevention. Now, let's dive into how DefenCat works and why it's a game changer. DefenCat is a catheter lock solution that combines two key components. Taurolidin, which is an antimicrobial agent, and heparin, an anticoagulant. Here is how it's administered. After each hemodialysis session, a healthcare provider instills DefenCat directly into the central venous catheter. The solution stays in place between dialysis sessions and it's removed before the next treatment begins. This process ensures that the catheter remains clean and functional. So how does it really work? Taurolidin damages microbial cell walls and prevents bacteria and fungi from adhering to the catheter surface. This action disrupts biofilms, which are those sticky bacterial colonies that are resistant to antibiotics. Heparin, on the other hand, prevents blood clots from forming within the catheter, ensuring it remains open for use. Importantly, DefenCat is not absorbed into the bloodstream. It works locally within the catheter. This minimizes systemic side effects while effectively reducing infection risks by up to 71% compared to standard treatments like heparin alone. Now you might be wondering, does DefenCat have any competition? The closest contender is Minolac, developed by Citius Pharmaceuticals. Minolac is also a catheter lock solution aimed at savaging infected catheters rather than replacing them. Here's how they compare. While Minolog focuses on treating infections after they occur, DefenCat takes a proactive approach by preventing them altogether. This makes it particularly appealing for high-risk populations like dialysis patients. Another advantage, DefenCat covers both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria as well as fungi, a broader spectrum than many alternatives. With its proven efficacy, strong safety profile, DefenCat is already showing signs that it can dominate this niche. And with no direct competitors offering similar prevention-focused solutions at this scale, Cormetics could be sitting on a gold mine. Stick around because next up we'll discuss Cormetics financial outlook and why analysts believe this stock could skyrocket in value. But before getting into financials, let's talk about market and pricing. DefenCat is priced at $250 per 3 ml vial with most patients requiring two vials per treatment sessions and that they're going two to two and a half sessions per week. This puts the annual cost per patient at roughly 26,000 to 32,000, depending on usage. And now let's talk numbers, because at the end of the day, cash is what keeps a company afloat. Cormetics had a stellar 2024, reporting 43 million in total revenue with 31 million coming from Q4 alone, which are preliminary numbers, marking a significant ramp up in sales following the launch of DefenCat. For Q1 2025, they already have 25 million in open purchase orders, indicating strong continued demand. As of December 31st, 2024, Cormetics held 52 million in cash and short-term investments. Again, these are preliminary results. This solid cash position gives them a strong foundation as they expand into new markets, like inpatient care through partnerships such as their recent deal with Cineos Health. Now, let's look at how they're spending the money expenses. For 2025, Cormetics projects operating expenses between 72 million and 78 million, driven largely by increased research and development, spending for clinical trials and other initiatives. 
With the current cash position of 52 million and no debt, they have enough runway to cover about eight to 10 months of operations at this burn rate. However, with sales ramping up significantly, expected to hit 120 million in 2025, even in conservative estimates, the company is very likely to reduce its reliance on cash reserves as revenues grow. And here's some great news for shareholders. Cormetics has zero debt on its balance sheet. That's right, no loans, no interest payments, no financial leverage risks. This clean balance sheet is a huge advantage, especially for a company transitioning from development to commercialization. It means that they can focus on scaling the fan cap without worrying about servicing debt obligations. Now let's look at shares outstanding, which is a critical factor for investors concerned about dilution. Over the past year, insider activity has shown minimal share sales with most insiders holding onto their positions or selling only for tax reasons. There hasn't been any significant increase in shares outstanding recently, which is great news for existing shareholders as it indicates that Cormetics hasn't resorted to dilutive financing. So will Cormetics need more funding to stay afloat? The short answer is probably not, at least in the near term. And here's why. First, the company has already reached break-even on an adjusted EBITDA basis as of Q4 2024. Second, sales are accelerating rapidly, with projections suggesting 120 to 180 million in revenue for 2025, which should cover their operating expenses. Third, analysts predict that Cormetics will achieve free cash flow break-even within the next year or so. With that said, if they decide to accelerate research and development efforts or pursue label expansions aggressively, they might consider raising additional funds through equity or partnerships. But given their current trajectory and lack of depth, any such move would likely be strategic rather than out of necessity. Cormetics is in an outstanding financial position for a small cap biotech company, growing revenues, no debt, and minimal risk of delusion in the near term. I currently do not own any Cormetic stock, but I would love to invest in the company. But before that, let me find out what a fair value share price could look like based on this future potential. All right, so now let's calculate what Cormetic's fair value share price could look like based on its future potential. And here is how we break it down. For 2025, we're gonna take a projected revenue of 150 million. For price to sales ratio, eight seems like a reasonable multiple for a growing biotech with market exclusivity in the United States. Shares outstanding, 54.9 million, cash on hand, 52 million, and debt, zero. So to determine the market cap, we first calculate the market cap using the price to sales ratio in this case. Market cap equals to projected revenue times PS ratio, and in this case, it's $1.2 billion. Step two, we adjust for cash and debt. So since Cormetics has 52 million in cash and no debt, which is zero, we adjust the market cap by adding cash. Equity equals market cap plus cash minus debt. The total, the result is $1.252 billion. Step three is to calculate fair value share price. Finally, we divide the equity value by the updated shares outstanding. In this case, it's 54.9 million shares to arrive to a fair value share price. In this case, it is $22.79 per share. Now, this valuation reflects the company's growth potential and market exclusivity in the biotech sector. And again, this is considering that they will reach the 150 million plus sales for this year and continue to grow for next year as well. And that wraps up today's deep dive into Cormetics. I hope you found this breakdown helpful as you continue exploring investment opportunities in the biotech space. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll never miss an update from the biotech investor. Your support helps me create more content like this. Now, a quick but very important reminder. Everything we've discussed today is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. Investing in biotech stocks, especially smaller companies like Cormetics, come with risks. So always do your own research and consult a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay curious, stay informed and happy investing. Thank you.